there is no good grad school application package without a good statement of purpose your statement of purpose is the glue that binds all of your applications together i am a fifth year phd student studying molecular biology in the united states i have written a number of statements of purpose and i have also helped people review theirs this is what i would do if i was writing a statement of purpose in 2023 hello friends and welcome to my channel my name is evie and i make videos about faith and grad school and life in between in today's video i'm going to be reading my statement of purpose that got me into a fully funded phd program as well as giving you points and tips of what to do and what not to do if you do not know what a statement of purpose is a statement of purpose is basically a document usually between 500 to 1000 words that explains your motivation for doing the course or the program you're interested in doing as well as tells the professors or whoever is reviewing the sop why you are qualified for that program and how that program would help you in your future endeavors a statement of purpose also helps to fill in the gaps where you've taken a leave of absence or you've been off work or education for a particular period of time so to my first tip introduce yourself and your background give a story of why you are interested in the course now this is usually the first paragraph there is usually a motivation maybe a problem you've seen that you want to solve maybe something that shaped your um, passion for that particular cause during your childhood or something like that now usually i advise people to stay away from sub stories except they directly relate to why they are applying for that course now coming out to say that there are 500 hungry children in your village okay it is better for you to say i had an encounter with this particular child and my encounter with this child increased my passion to want to fight hunger in africa that's better than just quoting the statistics who says there are 500 hungry students or hungry children in so 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 and so that doesn't help they already know the statistics so that's not particularly helping to tell your own story so i'll give an example of what i used as my introduction or background so i was applying for a phd in molecular biology and my research area of interest was diabetes my interest in diabetes began right from childhood as i grew up seeing my grandmother take a ton of medication in an attempt to fight hyperglycemia this interest seemed to wane off after her death in 2008 but was recently reignited as i saw another family member suffer because of type 2 diabetes so that's my interest okay i want to do this program in diabetes and if you're applying for a phd you should make your statement of purpose about your research interest don't make it a generic statement of purpose make it a very direct one so that's what i did with this diabetes so that's it it's a story that is personal it's a story that someone else is most likely not going to have especially the way i have written it and that makes it more intriguing for people to see so i'm not starting off just stating generic facts that don't really matter i'm starting off stating a personal story which is why it is your personal statement. Now, the next thing is that you want to state what has prepared you for this. So it's one thing for you to say you are passionate about studying this, but what exactly has prepared you to be able to succeed in a grad school program? Now, if you're applying for a master's, it means what courses did you take in undergrad? What internship experiences, what volunteer experiences have you done that will enable you excel in grad school? If you're doing a PhD, then it could be what research endeavors have you carried out? What laboratory techniques, in my own case, as a um, molecular biologist, what laboratory techniques have you been able to carry out that makes you be able to excel in this particular area? So this is what I wrote for that segment. In fulfilling my duties as a graduate research officer in a molecular biology research institute in Nigeria, 
I have been exposed to a wide range of laboratory techniques, which include DNA and RNA extraction, basic and real-time polymerase chain reactions, as well as other molecular biology techniques. Under the supervision of XYZ, that's my supervisor, I have participated actively in carrying out a variety of research activities. Some of them include genetic profiling of patients with endometriosis, using real-time PCR techniques, blah, blah, blah. So I go on to mention the exact research work that I have been part of. Now, when you do this, it shows that you're not just someone that has passion but no direction. You're someone who has passion but has applied that passion into real tangible activities that yielded results in line with what your passion is about, okay? So it's very, very important. If you were to do an internship, make sure you write it. Whatever it is that you have done that you know would set you apart as someone who is qualified for this. You want to make sure you highlight that. Now, the next thing is you want to show that you have done your research about the school and you want to show exactly what research questions you will answer. So for instance, again, as a PhD student or even a master's doing research, what exact research questions would you want to answer by doing your grad school program with this particular school? So this is the place for you to shine and say and show that you really know about the school and you're not just having all these dreams and goals in your mind without any proof of your passion. So this is what I wrote for that section. I came across a research article published in Dr. XYZ's lab, that's my current advisor's lab, which established a link between manoheptulus and increased insulin secretion. As one eager to see the discovery of new drugs to combat diabetes, I am excited about the potential this research has and would love to proceed in this research path at Ohio University. Although enthralled by Dr. XYZ's work, I recognize the equally innovative research works carried out in other labs such as Dr. XYZ, another researcher, where she studies age and diabetes related cognitive declines. I am flexible and willing to join any of these labs. So what this immediately communicates is that this is not a generic statement of purpose that you are sending to all the schools you are applying to. You have actually done the work, maybe even contacted these professors beforehand, especially if you're going to be doing a PhD and you already know their line of research and how you would fit into their lab. So this is very important. Now, let me give an example for someone who is applying for a master's. You may not have contacted a professor. Your case may be different, but at least you will know something about the program. What are the courses that are available for you to take in the program? What are the perks of the program? What associations are the program affiliated to? What are the internship opportunities that are available when you do that program? Make sure you highlight it and state how that will be helpful for you and your goals, okay? That just makes you stand out as someone who is proactive, who has done their research, and who is coming correct. I want this because of X, Y, Z. Now, the fourth one, which if you have space, I would highly recommend you put in, is that you highlight your volunteer experiences. Now, this is also important when the volunteer experiences line up with whatever you're going to be doing for your grad school program. So for instance, if you're going to be doing a grad school program about food security, I don't know why food security keeps coming to my mind, then what you want to do is that you want to write a statement of purpose that explains your volunteer works maybe in um, hunger, a hunger drive, a donation of food drive, whatever it is that you have done in that line. Maybe you volunteered at a farm for a while, maybe you gave out food, it could even be something you did in your church and you saw how it was beneficial to people in the community and that ignited, you know, just make sure you tie it down. This statement of purpose is all about you sitting down and reflecting on the things you have done, no matter how small they have been, because they can play a huge role in making you stand out from the crowd. 
So all you need to do is reflect on it and then make it sound good. And that's it. So highlight relevant volunteer experiences that make you stand out as a leader, that help you to um, be more suited for the grad school program, or even just volunteer experiences that not everybody has had, you know, that can make you show that you stand out. So I'm going to read what I wrote for that. During my undergraduate years, I volunteered as a student tutor, where I taught both my peers and juniors various course modules that seemed complex. From volunteering, I was upgraded to a paid teaching assistant, where I taught biology to pre-university students. Currently, in addition to my job as a graduate research officer, I volunteer with TEDx in my local community as a curator. Here, I am responsible for scouting and training speakers for our TEDx conferences, which are focused on unearthing indigenous African ideas capable of advancing the continent in areas such as research, entrepreneurship, and education. So you see how I slid research into it as well as education. Because yes, I'm a TEDx curator, but how does it help my case for applying for a PhD in molecular biology? I brought in that we're bringing speakers that have raised the bar in research and education, and that is great. I also talked about when I volunteered as a student tutor in my university. Now, most um, some graduate programs require that you are a teaching assistant. So if you bring in that you've already taught and you have experience teaching, that already places you higher than some other people that may be applying. So basically, write your volunteer experiences in such a way that it would help you look like you were tailor-made for this position. You know, write it in such a way that they don't have to think too much before they wonder how this relates to the program. Now, the final thing I'm going to say is that talk about the program and how it's going to impact your future goals. They don't want you to just be doing a PhD or a master's just because you want a DAPA or just because you want to leave your country. That's not the idea. They want people who will do the PhD or the master's program and go on to carry the school's name in a good light. The school wants to have Nobel Prize winners as part of their alumni. They want to have people doing really big stuff. So this is where you talk about your future goals. So of course, for me, it was that I wanted to become a professor. That was then four years ago. Things may have changed now, but that was then. I wanted to become a professor. I wanted to impact knowledge. And that's what I said. So for you, if you're doing a master's, maybe you want to work with the UN or any international organization that is trying to combat food um, insecurity, stuff like that. So basically think how this particular grad program would help you reach your future goals, okay? That's it. Um, usually, if you're able to touch on this and really highlight how you're well suited for the grad program, that's usually a good statement of purpose. Of course, use active sentences. Do not use a passive voice. Okay, let me give an example of a passive voice. So there are two ways you can say this. For instance, you want to talk about your teaching. You can say, I taught an undergraduate class, blah, 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 which is an active voice. You can also say, an undergraduate class was taught by me in preparation for XYZ visit. That is a passive voice. It doesn't even sound nice to you. So refrain from using passive voice. Use your active voice. Make sure you have someone retreat. Make sure you have your statement of purpose for at least two weeks so that you can keep going over it and revising it. If what makes you prepared for this particular course is not like maybe internships or things you've done, it could be courses you've, take, you've taken. Some people do a lot of courses on Coursera. You can talk about it, but don't only talk about it. Talk about what you learned as a result of taking the course, okay? And of course, stick to the word limit. Some statements of purpose would actually give you question prompts to make sure that you are answering the questions that they give you and you're not just saying your own. But yeah, I just thought to quickly do this video because I think it will be very helpful. In my experience, the more concise, the more clear, the better. Try not to use running sentences. Some of what I read to you had a bit of running sentences. That was four years ago. Now I wouldn't do that. It's better for you to be short and straight to the point, okay? 
don't try to be poetic or anything like that just give them the information that they need they want to know whether you are well suited for the program whether you have enough motivation for the program make sure that you convince them that you do and that's it okay so thank you guys so much for watching i have a full video about everything you should know before applying for grad school so make sure you take a look at that i have a grad school playlist look at that learn as much as you can and i will see you in my next video bye